Camera one, camera two, how you doing? Say hi. 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 All right. Let's start again. <laughs> oh, what am I doing? I need a knife. I need a badass knife. Machete, that's what I need. Hi guys, Tops here from Just One For All. I need to build a PC. Um, a good editing PC but I'm not rich, I have to work extremely hard and so I'm going to build a budget PC, reasonably budget for myself and while doing it, all the research and information I found out, I'm going to show you guys how you can save even more. We're talking in the region of 600, 700 pounds, you can get a really, really good budget editing PC that would also do games really well as well. Something I must stress guys, now, when the difference between an editing PC and a gaming PC, there's a little bit of a difference. A gaming PC will need really good graphics processor, GPU, graphics card. A fairly decent processor, medium range you could get away with, and fairly decent to high-end RAM. Motherboard needs to be good, those are the most important thing for gaming. But for editing, the most important thing is the processor, RAM and the motherboard and the CP PSU power supply unit. All right, guys, because it's going to draw a lot of power from there. So let's get started. So, the first part I'm going to show you my computer and the parts I've bought, and then I'm going to show you, for example, this uh, GTX 1050 Ti. You don't need one that powerful. This is a 4 gigabyte version, you could easily go for a 2 gigabyte version and it doesn't have to be TI and so on. And then you could almost get it for one third of the price of this. And there's almost 80, 80 pounds saving. All right guys, so stick around and leave some comments at the end what comp components maybe you would change or you have come across which is better than what I've used. Um, any suggestions? Your thoughts, is it good, is it bad? Leave those comments be at the bottom. Uh, leave down below all the components I've used and all the replacement components that you could use to save even more money. You would be surprised. I had a look for a ready-made PC for editing and we're talking about anything from 900 pounds and upwards. The problem was the ones I wanted was around the region of 1,200 pounds. Now, in that £1,200, they would go and put something cheap in, like for example, a cheap motherboard, or cheap RAM, or a cheap processor, and that's not good to me. This way, I can get exactly the components I want, and happy days. Hopefully, it should last me a good few years. I've gone for some top-of-the-range stuff, for example, like a processor, I've gone for the i7 6700K, and Overall, it seems to be the best. I've got confession to make, guys. I was using this laptop. It's a i3, approximately two gigahertz, six gigabytes of RAM, and I've done over 300 videos using Filmora, which is not a high-end, demanding photo editing software, and I've got away with it. Now, I have had to rebuild it a couple of times. The uh, what is while the movie is getting rendered with Filmora, that's when your processor has to work the hardest and it's sending the information to your hard drive to write, 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 write the sectors. The hard drive is this laptop started off with a 500 gigabyte hard drive that died. That died about five months ago. So I rebuilt it. I was I was a bit lazy, I didn't bother researching, so I rebuilt it, I thought it was bad, hard drive. Put Windows 7 back on, put Filmora and all the other software back on. And then about two, three months later, I was doing a lot more. Now I started doing 1080p, it died again. And I was like thinking, oh no. So I've done some research, I've rebuilt it again, but only gonna use it as a backup and emergency. And I've done some research and I've been really lucky with Filmora and the software on this laptop. It is nowhere near capable and it shouldn't have lasted that long 
and it's done me absolutely so much good and proud I'm proud of this laptop and you shouldn't be using you need quad core you should at least have around the region of 3 gigahertz or more you need minimum 6 gigabyte RAM 8 is better but for the new build I'm gonna go for 16 gigabyte if like me you're doing all your most of your editing from a little room or an office then I would say go for a desktop Laptops can be good. You can go and buy some really expensive laptops to do your editing But it ends up being more expensive than a tower. You can get more buck for your money with a tower so If you are on the move and you want to do your editing with laptop Then just be prepared you will pay I don't know between anything up to 30% 40% more and I haven't got that much money so I've got to think and this is only at the moment a hobby and I only do it in my spare time so I've gone for a tower now and I'll still carry on using this laptop but only as a backup or when I'm traveling and I'll use it to the bare minimum because I know it's not I'm gonna take the 6 gig RAM up to 8 gig hopefully that would help a little bit so to start off with the processor guys, I've gone for the i7 6700K. That is generation six processor from Intel. Generation seven is out, but you're gonna pay a lot more. I paid 250, 260 pounds, brand new sealed i7, and I got it from eBay. I had to negotiate a deal with someone who was trying to sell and it was a bit more. On Amazon, on it's around the £330 mark. The other day I saw it for sale, it's about £320 here in the UK. It's not going to drop for a while, it's one of the highest rated processor. So I just thought, invest in that. The processor is the most important part of your editing PC. So. Stretch your budget if you can and go for the best, the highest one you can afford. I would not recommend for things like Sony Vegas, Film, um, Adobe, Premiere Pro, any of those. Go anything less than i7, guys. i5, it will struggle and then other parts of your component will get the strain. I'll get rid of the small components first, guys, and I've got to be careful not to show you guys my dress. Okay, my dress. All right. So, ah, so I've just pulled this off the table and it's the Samsung SSD 750 Evo. Brand new sealed, negotiated deal of a guy on eBay for 90 pounds. Now I've gone for the 500 gigabyte. Now this will have the operating software and my movie files that I want to edit will go straight into there and then as I'm working with Filmora it will have quick access and it will help me out. The write will be fast and good. There is SSD drives faster better than this but when you compare everything here guys is money and performance balancing out. You know, if you got 400 pounds, go and buy the latest SSD drive. You know, your PC might cost over two grand, three grand, not a problem. But I'm trying to do it on a budget and I'm trying to keep the cost down. So this is my, gonna be my, my primary hard drive SSD. As my backup drives, I've gone for two brand new, one terabyte, SATA drives, just make sure there's 7200 RPM and not the 5400 guys, because 5400 will really struggle. So after I've done my work on this, it will get backed up onto this for keeping. And this one's backup is this one. So I've gone for two one terabyte. There is lots of GPUs out there guys you could use for editing. Ideally, anything 2 gig is actually enough, but I've gone for 4 gig just in case I want to use a tower. Now, I've gone for the palette one. Palette. This is an older one I've used before, and I've had no problem. And you get more for your money. That's what it's all about. You get more for your money. And I've gone for 
Vengeance LPX DDR4 3000 gigahertz and two sticks of 8 gigabyte so total 16 gigabyte again brand new seal this is in Amazon at the moment for 110 pounds two of these I picked this up on eBay a couple of people selling it negotiated a deal with someone and I paid 90 pounds 8 gigs will do 16 gig is better guys with the sixth generation CPUs processors you want to use Z170's motherboard. I have gone for the MSI Z170A Tomahawk. I've done some research and this was 4K uh, capable and it's in the medium range and it gives really good performance. Again guys, it's personal preference, how much you want to spend and it is absolutely fantastic. That's from Amazon, I paid approximately 90 pounds. All right, so that's gonna go. So we've got here TSU, your power supply unit. Again, after a certain amount of reviews, 500 is plenty guys. 350 is actually enough. But you always go a little bit more because you never know in the future. And the cooling Hyper 212 Evo. Again, it was recommended. These came from Amazon as well. There's a good deal. And I paid about 22 pounds for that one. And for this one, I forget, it might be in the 40 pound range. So, if you're not sure about which PSU to use, go to msi.com and they've got brilliant little app like page just click the components you're putting in for example one graphics card um 16 gig of ram um z170 motherboard um, and so on and it will total up and show you on the right hand corner which how much psu to go when i did all mine it said 350 plenty and I actually went overboard I actually said two GPUs and it still said 350 so don't go overboard guys don't go overkill now this was in the region of about 50 pounds they do a few of these cases now I found some really nice case guys and they were really aggressive like you know alien like design but I'm a 40 year plus I'm over 40 and I don't want one of those bling bling aggressive looking towers I'm not going to be doing that so I wanted something that's going to look neat and smart and practical so that's the main thing so I went for this one after a recommendation from Texos he recommended this one for budget to good build now they do one with more lights and all that window, see-through window and so on. But I went for the one without the window. But extra, 3.1 USB. The one with the light has, when it decides to come out, it's got stuck. I can see exactly where, here. Okay, let's start again. Um, they do one with the window, but it has only, I think, one 3.1 USB on the front of the case. Have them out. And the other side. But I thought, I don't really need a window. No one's going to be looking in my case. It's not going to be on display or anything. So I thought I could do with the extra 3.1 USB. So I got the silent version. This is called a silent version. Where's the name? There we are. So 100R silent edition. Corsair Carbide series. They have their own channel guys. So check it out. 
seems to be good info. Everyone throws things around, let's throw. And what we got here? This way. The book. Now, I'll tell you what is important. When I thought about doing this, what I liked is the no tools needed. I can access it quickly. It's a nice medium, it's an ATX case. So it's a nice medium size, not micro, not mini. And take that off, the silent. Oh, what's this? So it's got some padding. It's got some padding up here and here as well, and at the back. All right, guys. Now, I'll just show you that a bit better. Good cable system. We can take the cables out the back. Again, I can open that up. Now, what is the most important is this quick release. See that? So it's the quick release hot swapping of the hard drives. So I can get four in there, which I'm planning to slowly fill up. At the moment, I'll just put, actually I need three. Nice big extra fan here, which is part of the silent series. You can just see, it looks like 120 mil. So I'm happy with that. Nice softish rubber on the bottom. And there is something here. If you do put your towel on the floor, there's a gauze filter thing for you to wash. And it helps. Little things like this help get less dust in your towel. Case feels strong and sturdy, guys. I don't see it wobbling much. It's a very good case. I like it. I'll just show you a close at there. So you've got the two USB microphone, headphone, and your eject and no reset and power button. Alright, so I've gone for a bit more sophisticated look most good cases now guys power supply is at the bottom because it's quite heavy of component and it just stabilizes everything else more when the power supply is to be here it it did it did affect the case so it was a bad design for too long Wow, I just realized there's another fan at the here, which I remember actually from the video, but I forgot. There's a fan here, there's a fan at the front. Brilliant. I don't think I need to add any more fans on this guy. Thank you, I love it. Just can't wait to build it now. So here is the machine guys, all done, first boot I'm about to do. I know the lighting is not great in this room, that's the reason why I don't record. Now I'm not going to go for an optical drive on this machine because I have this really good Blu-ray disc already, external. I'm just going to use this to one time put Windows 10 on here. The reason I'm not doing the USB ISO because I already have a Windows 10 disk professional. So that's the reason. Alright, so let's see. Together, let's turn it on. So the PSU switch is there. It's always worrying, even though for 15 years I've been building. You just have this in your mind that it might just go pop. So press the power button. Nice. Some LEDs there. Everything just hooking up. All started fine. And here it is. First booting up. And just coming along really nicely. Really chuffed with this build. And really, really happy. So just getting all the updates. Go all the drivers on already. Now getting some more Windows updates. 
Cool. Really happy with this build. Now time for cable management guys. This is the back of the case and check out all these cables. I have no idea where I'm going to put these cables. I really don't want them in the other part. So let's see how it goes. Let's have a go. Okay guys, the tower is finished and I'm really really impressed with all the components really really happy now just give you a little view around trying to record and so on so it's gone it's, it, I could not have been more happy with it it was really easy the build quality is fantastic so I know some people on Amazon website have commented oh the case is this and that but I have absolutely no complaints with the actual case now guys I'm going to give you a quick look inside here now don't comment on my cable management because no one's going to be looking into my case and I'm not going to be heavy on display so just go through the FCAR 500B power supply unit I've got two one terabyte hard drives in there, normal, and just above here, I've got a 500 Samsung Evo 750 SSD drive. There's my GPU 1050Ti. This cooler is fantastic, guys. Absolutely brilliant. Solid. It is the noisiest thing in here, but it is really quiet compared to, you know, some other cooling so I've got the Corsair 3000 the DDR4s and as I've got no optical drives I put all my loose cables in here they've come in from the back so there you go I'm really impressed really happy with the quality the case comes with two fans there's one there's one they're approximately estimating without measuring them 120 and they are absolutely silent. The GPU fan is silent and the PSU fan is also absolutely silent. Just brilliant. The PC is running Windows 10 64 Professional and it's absolutely brilliant. Um, the temperature of the CPU has not gone above 32 and the case temperature inside has not gone above 24. In this particular one guys, the fan, there's arrows here, so the air gets sucked in from there, comes through here. You want to keep this area uh, clear, alright, so the air flows. This fan's got arrow and is blowing onto the cooling elements. That, then the warm air comes out here. And this fan is blowing out, goes out of the case. There's heat sinks to spread the heat on the RAM. This particular case, I leave the description link at the bottom. It's got a fan control here, the case fans, this one and the front fan to control. I've got it on the lowest setting and it's absolutely fine. It's quiet and the temperature is absolutely fine at the moment in the case and everything else. So I've left it there. It's got three settings there. Low, medium and high. Obviously the higher, the more fan noise, the CPU fan and sorry, the case fan is working harder and faster. So absolutely really chuffed. They've even gone to the trouble of coloring the grill in the parts you can take off all sprayed and really, really impressed. Really happy with this build could not have asked for more and saved a lot of money in this build and got myself something that's going to last me a good few years and I'm happy with the components and I don't have to put up with you know second rated components or something a little bit under par.